So Major League Soccer will be taking over the sale of Real Salt Lake. Today was the deadline for owner Deloy Hansen to find a buyer on his own. Hansen announced his intention to sell the team in August after allegations of racist behavior and he took a leave of absence. Now our content sharing partners at the Salt Lake Tribune say Hansen has met with potential buyers but the talks really didn't go anywhere. Here's a look at what the sale would involve because it's not just Real Salt Lake. It's called Utah Soccer Holdings and they own Real Salt Lake, the Real Monarchs, Rio Tinto Stadium, and the Harriman Training Complex. So really a huge land development and a big part of the city of Sandy as well. So joining us this morning to go in-depth in this sale, Alex Vehar covers Real Salt Lake for the Salt Lake Tribune. And Alex, I'm so glad to get the chance to talk to you about this. Um, first of all, is, is there any uh, like formalized announcement? Do we know that the keys of the of the car have been given to MLS at this point or is it just we know the deadline is today right right now we just know the deadline um the deadline was set several months ago um it's been known for quite some time that January 8th was when Deloy Hansen kind of uh had to sell the team by uh, before the league took it over took over the sales process to be clear um, but the league has not made a formal announcement about it yet. But like I said, the date has been set for quite some time. What's, what's been going on? That's a long time to, to be trying to sell something. I mean, we're talking about a big uh, organization. But what, do you know, was Hansen making a strong effort to sell the team? Yeah, uh, like you mentioned, he's been meeting with potential, potential buyers, um, ownership groups. Um, you know, he's, he's had... People come in for tours of the facilities um, of both stadiums in Harriman and in Sandy. Um, and the talks just haven't been going very well. He's been mm. struggling to find local buyers. Notably, um, one of those people was Ryan been, Smith, right, from uh, the Qualtrics owner who's now the owner of the Utah Jazz. And uh, any idea why, why that didn't happen? The only thing that I've been told is that the, they just didn't really seem to get along, didn't really seem to to kind of see eye to eye. So um, it's it's been reported that Ryan Smith might be kind of just trying to wait out um, until the league takes it over and he can kind of just work with the league if he's still interested in buying the team, which my understanding is he still is and he's expressed that somewhat publicly recently. And do, do we know how, how much is the team worth or how much are they asking for? I don't know what a major league soccer franchise goes for. There was a report early um, in the process, maybe about a couple weeks to a month after Deloitte Hansen decided that to sell the team that he was asking for about $500 million. Um, now that included RSL, the Monarchs, the Utah Royals at the time, which has since been moved to Kansas City and all of the facilities that we've been talking about. So it's a little unclear what taking the Royals out of the equation means for the valuation, but um, the $500 million figure is a pretty good marker considering that's about how much it costs for an expansion team to come into the league Okay. as it is. Okay, and, and Smith bought the Jazz for $1.6 or $1.7 billion or something like that. Isn't that uh, what it went for? So um, is MLS, because Deloy Hansen said he was committed to keeping the team in Utah, has MLS said the same thing? Is it possible that, they're going, that we're going to lose the team? I think anything is always possible, but that being said, um, Don Garber, the commissioner of Major League Soccer last month, did say that there were no plans for the league to move RSL out of the Salt Lake market. He said that Salt Lake City has been a very good market for the league. Um, there's history here. There's you know obviously infrastructure here. So it wouldn't really make too much sense for the league to take the team out of the market, but things happen all the time and you know, I'm, I kind of just think I, it's my personal opinion that it's not likely the team leaves, but you know, I don't know. It's sports. Yeah, so. they they would uh, they would uh, have to abandon that beautiful stadium and other things too. So, uh, last question: We're we're pretty much out of time, but uh, RSL had a pretty bad season just now. They've been a good team over the years at various points. They won a championship in 2009. So, has all of this impacted what's on the field? And are they? Are they keeping players as this is going on? I'm not sure to what extent all of this um, affected the on-field play. Um, the, the team on the field is is rather young and they they just 
it was the coach Freddie Juarez's first year. He was trying to implement a bunch of different things, uh, kind of like a different style of play and different principles and the pandemic affected everything. And then you had all this other stuff behind the scenes. So in my estimation, the combination of everything that happened in 2020 made it difficult for any team to, to perform up to expectations. Yeah. And RSL just had a, a pretty difficult time. Okay. Uh, yeah, Alex Fehar, it, it is a pleasure to talk to you. So glad that you're uh, up for uh, filling us in on exactly what's been happening with RSL.